Hi, everyone. My name is Pastor Shalonda Johnson, and you are with CNE Christian Network Entrepreneurs, where we showcase upcoming uh, business leaders and community leaders, and they're going to give us some great information that will help us personally and business-wise. But today, today we have an amazing guest who is just full of information. I don't know if a whole hour is enough to cover everything that she does, but we're going to attempt nevertheless. So we have Miss Diane Listman on the show today. Hey, Miss Diane, how are you? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so kindly for having me. Yes, yeah. we are excited. So I always, although I, I host this show, but I always sit in the seat of a student sit in the seat because the individuals that we um, interview have so much information. I was so looking forward to today with you. So we're so glad to have you on the show. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm excited. Good, good, good. And like I said before, you've done so much. So I think our viewing audience is just going to be amazed. We've met previously, I think about a year ago, mm -hmm. um, on a, a business deal that my husband yeah. and I were working on. And you were just amazing, amazing. So before we start the show and really get into the notes and the bolts of everything, we do what's called ETR, earn the right to tell us, earn, us, earn the right to let us know why you're a professional in your field. That's where you pretty much introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about who Miss Diane Linsman is. All right. Well, once again, my name is Diane Linston. I own a manufacturing company that's called Cleveland Cut and Sew that is located on 36 and Payne Avenue. I also have a upscale boutique that is in Beachwood, Ohio. And I've been doing this for well over 20 years. So I continue to educate myself because the world is changing. So you have to stay up with the trends and um, what's going on in uh, the, today's world in order to be knowledgeable mm -hmm. about your business. Great, great. Mm -hmm. So I got several questions just from that brief intro. How long have you been in business and what got you started? Uh, I, I'm a fashion designer. I should say that. I'm okay. a business person, an entrepreneur. At the age of 15 in home economics, I always knew I wanted to be a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. Could not imagine anything else in life. Um, so I did go to college. I went to Virginia Marty College of Fashion and Arts. Uh, I earned a degree in fashion design and fashion merchandising. Later on, I became one of the, um, I helped write the curriculum for students. So um, just really excited about doing that. But just throughout the years, I started Styles of Imaginations actually in 1999. Wow. Yeah, and just been, I started with a little boutique on Warrensville Center Road, and then I went to Tower City, and um, then I just wanted to, I love what I do. So, yeah. you know, I wanted to uh, have my own manufacturing company. That took a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, what made me really wanted to do that is everybody, you know, with clothing, you think of offshore mm -hmm. designers um, making their clothing overseas. And um, I started doing like a lot of shows and I saw a lot of designers like myself that, um, you know, they want to manufacture their clothes, but we can't afford to go overseas. Mm -hmm. So I started educating myself on how to start a manufacturing company. And in 2015, I got this building on 36 and Payne, and it just took off from there. Wow. Wow. So you said at 15, you pretty much knew, like, this yes. is it. And you know, it's amazing. I don't even think they have home economics in schools any longer. I got teenagers, and mm. they have not learned anything about sewing or anything <laughs> from school. But it's amazing. You were at 15, and it's just something just kind of, like, hit your mm -hmm. spirit. Like, this is it. This is it. So it, in between... Figuring out this is what I want to do and then becoming this is great entrepreneur. You. Did you ever work for any other companies or um, other than, you know, developing the curriculum for the college? Yeah. So actually, um, I've had many jobs. I had many jobs to realize that I need to go full circle with my business. So mm. when I speak to people, I say, 
you know, don't quit if you got a day job. Don't quit your day job until mm-hmm. you are financially secure, till you are know that you have that cash flow coming in. So kind of share my story with people. <laughs> um, I was still working. I had a really good job. I made really good money, but I was not happy. And I still had styles of imaginations, you know, and it's hard. It's hard trying to work a business and work a nine to five. Yeah. I just kept praying. I just kept saying, okay, Lord, you got to give me directions because I would have never quit on my own. Mm. And when I actually got fired Mm -hmm. and I allowed (laughs) myself to get fired and it was the best thing that could have happened to me because it prompts you to work harder. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have no pity party about myself. This was what I asked for. This is what I prayed for. So um, it just just went full throttle from there. I was asked by the college at the time, but now it's a different name. I think it's called North Coast College, but Mm -hmm. I was asked by the college to come in and uh, help put together the curriculum. So I was really, you know, excited about doing that. Wow. That is just, it's amazing. Um, It's so crazy because oftentimes you, it, God is like setting us up to do what we really, really want to do. I love the fact that you said when you got fired, you wasn't sad. You wasn't mm-hmm. upset any, or anything. You just mm-hmm. kind of went on to what mm-hmm. it was that you really, really yes. wanted to do. And I want to talk about it. just seems like you just move fearlessly. It, yes. it, it is. A, you know, I, I'm hearing the success story now, <laughs> but of course you lived it. Mm-hmm. It seems as though were you nervous about the transition or were you just so confident that this was what you were called to do? To be honest with you, I was very confident. I mean, when you pray, you have to be prepared for what you're asking for. So I was ready. I was totally ready. And I've just been full throttle ever since, like, every day that I wake up. It's just, okay, what are we going to do next? How are we going to grow the business? Uh, what's my next move? I don't let anything get in my way. And my clothing line is actually called NGU. And NGU means never give up. Uh, yeah, so I tell people to, you know, you got to have a plan. That's mm-hmm. number one. Okay. You have to have a plan. And then twice a year, the beginning of the year and uh, six months of the year, I create a vision board. And it's, mm-hmm. it really is when you, you know, create that vision board, it really, I don't know what it is, but it's like speaking what you want to do in fruition. Okay. Yeah, if that makes sense. No, it makes yeah. absolutely great sense. Um, I think people underestimate how important or how beneficial a vision board can be. Oftentimes, people are just like, oh, you're just putting pictures on a board. Like, no, I'm literally mapping out my next move yes. on this board. And it's visual. So yes. a lot of people um, hang it up like in their room mm-hmm. or different places in their mm-hmm. houses to remind them of the direction that they're supposed to go. So do you take like a, a, a few different days and kind of map this vision board out or um just okay so I start at the beginning of the year okay and I said okay this is my goals for this year and 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 it's so funny this all honestly I tell you guys this really does work you just don't know how the Lord is going to make it happen so um last year the beginning of last year I've always wanted, always wanted a big SUV like mm-hmm. a suburban or expedition. The, tiles, the big that's the big boys. Down the big boys. <laughs> exactly. So I cut out a picture and I, you know, placed it on um the vision board and I was like, okay, I'm gonna have this before the end of 2020. So then the pandemic hit mm-hmm. and um I sell masks and and it was just I sold over a hundred thousand masks. Uh, last year and guess what I was able to do buy my big truck and it's so funny because the truck is so big and people say oh I'm looking for this you know big person to come out like, well I'm a big girl but not you know this little short person to come out so that was on my vision board in January the 1st of 2020 and in October of last year I so I would have never imagined yeah 
selling masks because I'm a fashion designer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that was one. So, it, it, you know, I pray and I meditate. So it just manifests itself. Wow. Yeah. So okay, let's let's go back a little bit. <laughs> what did you get? What kind of what? a Ford Expedition. Oh, you got a really big boy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh wow great but i love the fact that you said you wanted it mm-hmm. um you mm-hmm. put it out there okay god this is what i want yeah you took a leap of faith and people don't understand it's even a leap of faith to cut this picture out and give yourself a mm-hmm. timeline and you were not discouraged by pandemic it was like oh my god what am i gonna do now mm-hmm. um you figured out a way to still have your business still be um, um fruitful still have your business yes. still moving Although we were in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing, even as a business owner, I'm learning is that you have to be able to see what's going on in the world and be able to cater your business towards to the need. Um, I don't know if you remember, I think it was February of this year. My husband and I were going to uh, Vegas. Yes. And we, I was like, is that Diane? <laughs> and she had like a little booth, which was so smart inside of the airport. Yes. That, you know, no matter what, even now we still need masks on the airport. Mm-hmm. So in case you forgot your mask, in case you just wanted to look extra stylish because she has like all of these little cute masks. <laughs> she was right there before you boarded. Yes. <laughs> Sally yes. her mask and I was mm-hmm. like wow how innovative and mm-hmm. how tapping into what the need was and although you're a fashion designer you still was kind of able to put your own little spin on yes. on the mask like wow that is amazing so let mm-hmm. me ask you a few other questions in regards to business um what are some of the common mistakes that small businesses make early on mm-hmm. well one of the things is they doesn't map out what they want to do. Uh-huh. So, and and I'm going to always use like a boutique or a store, for example. Uh-huh. I meet so many people that just, they just open up, a, they find a building and they just open it up. Okay, we're going to put clothes in there. And that's, it's far more than that. Uh-huh. Um, you have to do your homework. Like when I open up Styles of Imaginations in Beachwood. So I, um, did a, a search on demographic. Will it work? Uh, what is the disposable income? Parking is so important. Yes. And somehow, sometimes you got to have like an anchor store. So, you know, uh-huh. Giant Eagle is right next door. Uh-huh. Um, so I find like a lot of people, they just, there is no parking or you doesn't have enough inventory. So you got to map it out. You got to map it out. Uh, one of the things is you got to, I mean, you really have to be business. So you have to have projections of sales. You know, what are my sales are going to be two years from now, three years from now, how I'm going to get there. So you got to okay. think about things like that. A lack of your business. A lot of people think, okay, you can, we can be fashionable. But it's more than just, oh, I got a good eye for the way I dress. You got to know, like, t- today's trend. And uh, and then one of the biggest that people fail is that lack of cash flow. Got lack it. of cash yeah. flow. Yeah. I love how you're saying that you can be fashionable and have the, you know, the latest fashions, but you still have to know the business and we still have to take care of Mm -hmm. actual business because there are so many times you see people have great ideas, but they don't know how to have the business. Like like you said, projecting, um, what is, what demographics are you Mm -hmm. in? Are you Mm -hmm. in a demographic that supports what you sell? Exactly. Exactly. That is so Crucial, And even in Beachwood, I was a little, like, I would always go to the Giant Eagle in this spot. I was like, oh, man, I probably cannot afford the rent here. And, mm-hmm. um, but something just kept gravitating me to that uh, spot that we um, was at. And I just said, well, let me, you know, call and see how much the rent is. And I said, well, let me, I asked them, can we do a pop-up store? And we Uh did a pop-up store, which was supposed to be three days, and ended up to be 28 days. We blew it out the water. We blew it out the water. So besides selling clothes, we provide alteration service, jewelry repair. Um, We went from having 90% of African-American and 10% of Caucasian women. Now we have about 40% of Caucasian 
women and sixty mm-hmm. percent of African Americans. So just it's almost just as many as African American women. We are also having Caucasian women that absolutely love the store. Yeah, so mm-hmm. you were able to just diversify yes. your clientele. Now that is a <laughs> big thing right there because oftentimes we find that only African Americans want to shop with the mm-hmm. African Americans, but when you can mm-hmm. get to the point where you can kind of cross that 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 boundary yes. and everyone can see the value in what you have. Yes. Not just one race, not just one group of people where everyone can see the quality and the value. So I've been in the boutique. There is the, um, that's the one over there on um, Chagrin yes. by the Giant Ego. Yes. Okay, so you guys, you got to stop in there because it's like going <laughs> into like a little mini mall. Everything you can think of is in the store. Thank you. But um, it's really amazing. And what I love about it is that not only you cater to so many different mm-hmm. type of women. It's not a one type of woman type of boutique. Um, it doesn't matter if you are um, of your uh, plus size or if you're on the smaller size. It doesn't matter if you want conservative or you want something that make you shake a little bit. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. matter because when I went in there, I was able to um, look and see. But I seen myself in different aspects. I seen the business Shalanda. I seen the pastor Shalanda attire. I seen the Shalanda for date night with her husband. You see all of that mm-hmm. in your boutique, and that is really um, a strategy. And you know what? Let me stop. I even seen some custom pieces in there. Mm-hmm. So are they from your line? Do you have your own line? Yes. Yes, the NGU. Okay. Uh, and, yeah, a lot of the pieces that you would see from me, you are not going to see it nowhere else. Nowhere. Now, you might see it in a couple of other boutiques because I also sell the collection. I got about maybe... Um, 15 or 20 stores that carries my line, but that's all over the United States. Okay. But for the most part, um, if you want something different and unique, yeah, you can definitely find it at the boutique. Wow. So how long have you been in that particular, uh, location? Uh, two and a half years. It'll be three years next year in March. Okay. And mm-hmm. um, when you were talking about demographics and you know all of the business, and I could definitely see how that went into account to where you are. Mm-hmm. Because if you go to the location, you'll see Apple parking. Yes. You'll see it, no problem. And it's almost like um, if I want to go to the boutique and mm-hmm. buy me something and I need to go to the grocery store to get some groceries, mm-hmm. I can go right down the street. If I need to stop at Big Locks, everything is inside of that little plaza. Yes. Um, and you're mm-hmm. like the only boutique, I believe, that's even in, mm-hmm. in the plaza. So mm-hmm. it looks uh, uh, amazing. It was well thought out. And mm-hmm. I, I really want to hone that and how important it is to be well thought out. I know the title of this particular seg- segment is doing business in a fashionable way, yes. in a fashionable way. Mm-hmm. So let's get let's get back with our questions. Okay. What is some of the most important things that you need to know to help your business grow? So we talked about understanding the demographics, mm-hmm. um, um, not just understanding the demographics, but you also hit on a topic that is very important as well is that we need to, I'm going to put it in layman's terms in my terms. Okay. <laughs> we need to know mm-hmm. what type of money does the people make around us? Yep. Can they afford what it is you're selling? It may, you may have the most amazing idea, but if the area that you are in cannot afford your stuff, then we have mm-hmm. to rethink things. Very much so. You have hit uh, the nail on the head and that's what I, um, Kind of just, you know, on a sidebar, I didn't know that I was a wealth of knowledge. I didn't know that I could help people grow their business. I um, And people had started saying, you know, Diane, you need to speak about this. Now, I'm country. I'm from the <laughs> South. So I have that Southern accent. And that, and I never give up on anything in life. But that, I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to do that because, you know, my Southern accent. But. You know, you have to say people got to, you know, bypass that. People will bypass that and listen to what you have to say. So, you know, in essence of saying that is that you have to, um, you got, you, you definitely got to know your business and Mm -hmm. I see it all the time and I can almost look at a boutique and say, well, this boutique might last a year Mm -hmm. because they don't plan things out. 
you know, like you say, this in Beachwood, we have attorneys coming in. We have um, um, doctors coming in, CPA people that I know has money because they spend and they don't ask for a discount. They just whatever it is. <laughs> You know, we have people that have spent anywhere from $50 to $500 and doesn't buy that, that an eye. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. have to, you know, we provide excellent customer service, which is so important. Yes. <laughs> and the people that works in the boutique, I help them to be knowledgeable about, you know, our clothing. Mm -hmm. um, like what I have on, I design and I make. And so... I can look at a person and say, you know, try this on. Uh, I designed this outfit because a lot of ladies were one dealing with hot flashes. So they just want to be fashionable, mm -hmm. something lightweight, cool and comfortable. <laughs> and um, so once again, I stress the importance of knowing your business, knowing your products and your merchandise. The window is extremely important. That's what really draws a lot of people in. Oh, got mm -hmm. it. That, that display window. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I love how you're saying that um, you also take in consideration the woman. Yes. Because like you were saying, um, <laughs> the blouse that you have on now, um, if you're a certain age, you know exactly what she's talking about, about hot <laughs> flashes. <laughs> you get it. But to go into a boutique mm -hmm. and to say, okay, here, this is, um, I'm going to this particular place or I'm going mm -hmm. through this period in my life. And for this boutique to have something that fits whatever stage in life that yes. I am experiencing. Um, I love to go into a boutique and can I look and the person looks at me and say, Hey, this will look good on you. And oftentimes it's something that you normally probably wouldn't wear yourself, yes. but the expert is like, Hey, this could work. This could work for you. So, I mean, that is just amazing. And it's, um, no, everyone wants to feel like something is catered to them. And you talked mm -hmm. about the customer service. I don't care who you are. I don't care what field of businesses you are in. Everyone wants to feel important. Mm -hmm. I often use the analogy that every bank lends money. Yes. But the service is what separates the banks. You're going to get the cash for if you position yourself accordingly, you're going to be able to get the cash. Yes. But where do I feel at home at? Where do I feel that um, uh, they value the fact that I'm coming to you and spending my money on, on mm -hmm. something? So the service is very important, making mm -hmm. me feel um, like I'm just number one. Call it selfish, but. <laughs> no, and you're right. And when you say, when you speak in terms of the bank, we use the model of Huntington. Mm -hmm. If you bank at Huntington and you ever go in, they the first thing they say is, welcome. Yeah. So we say that as Styles of Imaginations, welcome. Is this your first time here? And if you say yes, may I get your name? My name is Diane. And hi, Miss Sharonda. Welcome to and so we in this it make you feel important when you address yeah. a person by their name. Um we have regular customers. We just know, you know, mm -hmm. their names offhand. So customer service is vital. Um, yes, mm -hmm. yes. So question, are you, do you still have the little kiosk at, um, at the airport? I do not. And the reason I don't is this is really sad to say I had no one to um, work the kiosk. I had no one to, um, we interview. Well, I shouldn't say we interview just, we had a lack of people that just, you know, was fearful about either coming to the airport or, you know, they just didn't um, meet the qualifications. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and it was not a hard job, you, you know. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, oh, wow. And I think that's something that a lot of business owners are running into now. We're mm -hmm. trying to find individuals that, you know, want to work, want to do something a little bit different. And I can imagine it couldn't have been hard at all. Because no. the only thing I see her do was just sitting there looking cute <laughs> and with the stuff. <laughs> that's all I see. That was <laughs> it. That was, I mean, totally. And it was a... um and I know it, it may seem like, oh, you know, you just put in a stand and CMS. You go through a lot. Yeah. Uh, it took me five months to get to that point because mm -hmm. you had to get a certification. Um, it was just a lot. You had to, uh, the airport 
Well, we didn't work for the airport. We worked for another company called Fratport. Okay. You have to interview with them because um, it's very important. You have to be on time. So if your hours are from 9 to 6, you have to be there from 9 to Mm 6. So they took all of that in consideration. But it took five months to get to putting a stand inside the Cleveland Hopkins Airport. Wow. So I think sometimes people don't realize how much back work happens. A lot of times you see the business, you see the company, Mm -hmm. and it just looks amazing. And it looks like, oh, this was so easy. But not understanding there's a whole lot of back work. There's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes. And you said you had to go through an interview process, Mm -hmm. which means they wanted to see the credibility of your business. They wanted to see the character of the owner of Mm -hmm. the business. So all of those things came into um and play when it came to because if you ask me when you get to the point where you're inside of Hopkins Airport, mm-hmm. you know the largest airport, I kind of call it the big leagues because mm-hmm. yeah. everybody can't can't get there. Right. And to get to the point where mm-hmm. in five months you didn't get discouraged, mm-hmm. but you had everything that was needed in order to make it happen. Literally, you guys, I'm telling y'all, when I, I'm like, really? <laughs> Diane in here? And she was just smiling, looking just so, so pleasant. Um, mm-hmm. and, but it was such, uh, it made me look at things different. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, <laughs> she, she, she in the big leagues. So we definitely appreciate, you know, you even being in that arena because everybody can't get in that arena. Yeah, it was. And we also had an opportunity for another to open up a boutique at another airport. But the issue we had was uh, employment. We could not have, um, we couldn't find people to, you know, work out there. And then it was okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, yeah. But um, the mass, it was, it was phenomenal. I mean, we had just built such a good relationship. It was people that was, you know, flying Coming from not just spirit because we was on spirit, but um, pilots, airlines, too. It was and then I made connections with other organizations. Wow! Yeah. So the networking piece. Talk to us a little bit about how important the networking piece is. Yeah, it, networking is the number one thing in the world that we live in today. And I use an example was the lady bought a mask from me, but I had on. Um, I make body butters and she Mm -hmm. said, Oh, you smell so phenomenal. Um, I would like to introduce you to one of my, a friend of mine who, uh, is a buyer for, I want to say Walmart, I I believe at the time. And I said, Oh, sure. And I just, you know, I thought that was so nice. And I just gave her one. She was a Delta and I just gave her a mask. Didn't think anything of it. The next thing I know the buyer from Walmart is calling me. (laughs) So um, always keep your business cards or flyers on hand because you never know. I met all kind of people um, that I network with to this day from the airport. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a plethora of people that go through the airport. Absolutely. And people came in terms to knowing us and knowing uh, at that time we was called the Cleveland Mass Company. Mm-hmm. So when people, I mean, even though we're no longer there, I still have customers that are calling. Yeah, so networking is just, is very important, extremely important. Have you noticed, have any of those individuals visit the shop? Yes, yes, very much so, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so we've talked about, like I said, we really need more than an hour with Miss Diane. <laughs> so we talked about, um, we talked about the shop and we talked about mm-hmm. all of the good stuff with the shop. Now let's talk about this manufacturing company because <laughs> it's who just owns a manufacturing company. So you said you started the manufacturing company and I'm in business myself. Mm-hmm. And I do notice that sometimes mm-hmm. um, what we need or what I may need for my business is so difficult to get within the United States. So mm-hmm. difficult to, it, it, it'll cost me so much just to try to do business at home. So, so give us some of the thoughts that um, guided you to say, hey, we need a manufacturing company. And mm-hmm. what do you manufacture? So it started off just manufacturing my own collection. Mm-hmm. And then I do a lot of shows like Fashion Week. And I sold like all of these merging designers that's 
They got their sewing machine backstage, sewing. I hate that. Like, Mm -hmm. you should be ready to hit this runway, not sewing up a piece, and the next 10 minutes you got it on the run. That's just, mm. But I realized (laughs) that they, they just didn't know. So I just created then even me just trying to deal with companies offshore Mm -hmm. i remember finding a company that i messed waste a lot of money over ten thousand dollars because they uh, when you're dealing with like china they doesn't know us american women black or white we're plus size Mm -hmm. Uh, so it just went bad and i had to okay now i don't I know about, you know, pattern making and let me see what I can do, you know, to start my own manufacturing company. I have to say that the city of Cleveland was very instrumental in helping me. I could create jobs. So yeah. that was their number one thing. Okay, so we're going to help you get um, what you need in terms of inventory and things like that. So it started off my own collection. Now I... Uh, create and manufacture for about 12 different designers all over the United States. Then it went to me being certified with like the state of Ohio, being able to be it on uniforms and now I'm doing curtains. So the um, MBE um, yes. um, certified uh, MBE yes. with the state of Ohio. I am certified MBE with the yes. state of Ohio as yes. well. So, mm-hmm. and, and it's crazy too. I, I'm so sorry to stop you, That's but okay. there. There are so many resources out here, Very especially so. being an African American woman. Yeah. Um, but there is a process because even to get the certification, there was a process that I had to go through, and there were the last that was like this three and a half hour interview. <laughs> yes, yes. So you know, yes, you know, but you have to be determined. So, and 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 I always tell people, everybody that has a business is not business. You have to think in terms of a business person. Yeah. You know, I'm a fashion designer. I love drawing. I love creating. But 15 years ago, I didn't know anything about business. So I couldn't figure out how could I financially, you know, you know, make this work financially. Mm-hmm. And um, so that is so crucial. And I share a story with um, we know no famous Amos. You okay. know about the cookies. Uh-huh. And he has no owner rights to his own cookies because he didn't know business. So he accidentally signed himself off to a company that, you know, making millions of dollars off of his own. Um, wow. You know, so you got to understand your business. That uh-huh. is very crucial because it almost happened to me where these investors They knew I didn't know. (laughs) So they wanted to invest 75% into my business. Now, I wasn't quite sure what they were talking about, but I know that 75% and 25%, (laughs) it ain't adding up. (laughs) So, yeah, that is so vital. Yeah. To the success Mm -hmm. of a business. Yes. Um, I like you were saying that you can be fashionable, but you got to be knowledgeable as Very well in so. order not to be taken advantage yes. of and then not only not to be taken advantage of but to be able to capitalize mm-hmm. on some of the opportunities mm-hmm. that are available to us oftentimes people think that there aren't opportunities there are so many opportunities mm-hmm. but you got to do the homework yeah. behind it to figure out what it is and um my husband and I we were just talking about some you know different situations in business and positioning yourself to have you a CPA and to, yes. to have you know if you don't know how to keep your keep books then you shouldn't be trying to keep these books <laughs> no you and that's you are so true you are so mm-hmm. true and that's what another reason why a lot of big small business fail quick books is easy um you got programs that will help you learn like the urban league jumpstart if you're a female entrepreneur ecdi so yeah and you do have to have a good CPA, good bookkeeping. Um, a lawyer in some cases. A lawyer yes. is very... And if you can't, like, really afford a, a lawyer attorney, try Legal Shield. 
I've heard about mm -hmm. them. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. definitely um, heard about them. I've, I've known some small businesses. Is that what they've utilized until mm -hmm. they can do something um, mm -hmm. a little bit bigger? Exactly. And so this manufacturing company, okay. let, let's, let's, okay. let's talk about that again because okay. I love fashion <laughs> as well. That's why I couldn't wait till you were on here. <laughs> okay. Um, so if let's say if I wanted to design or mm -hmm. I wanted to have like um, mm -hmm. my own line. Yes. So what do I do? I call Miss Liz, uh, Miss Diane yeah. and I say, hey, I want this um, particular outfit mm -hmm. design. So do I have to have it drawn up already or wh how would I how would I deal with you? OK, so a lot of people, they don't know how to draw. So mm -hmm. long as I can pull it out of your head, I can create it for you. Mm -hmm. So, um, a lot of people, they do come to me and say, well, you know, I want to uh, create this collection. So the first thing I'm going to do is get into your mind because it is a lot. So I want to know, am I, um, are, you know, you're wasting my time or I'm going to waste your time. And I say that because when I get the reality of it, I don't hear any more from those people because right, it's a right. lot of work. So I help, I kind of see where you're at with it. So a lot of them, they doesn't have fashion experience. And if you're really, really serious, yes, I will help you. I will show you, you know, if you don't know how to sketch, so I sketch it for you and then you know, what, what is it that you really want to do? Where do you want to take it? So if you just want to create a couple of pieces mm -hmm. and then I will help you in terms of how you want to market it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I find that a lot of people, like I'm working with a young lady, she's a, um, she's a Muslim. So her online store is phenomenal. So she knew how to, and then I think she also sell on Instagram and, okay. and so we just try to, you know, figure out and get a direction on where do you want to go? Because, you know, it's working capital. So it's, you know, it comes with, you know, buying fabric, yes. pattern making. So, you know, it's just depending on where, where you want to go with it. So I can help you. I definitely can help you. Mm -hmm. Got it. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you have this manufacturing company and mm -hmm. you have all, you said about 12 different Stores Boutiques. that can, yeah that carries my collection that carries my collection and also I have about uh, I don't lost count maybe ten or twelve designers to where we are literally manufacturing their collection. Wow! And uh, and then of course the mass okay of course the mass so uh, I have a uh, an advisor and last year he said Diane you need to get into um, making these masks because that's going to be the big thing. And I was like, I'm a fashion designer. Masks? Are you kidding me? He was like, no, I'm serious. But he was right. <laughs> and it just took off, you know, from there. And so being a business person, you got to think, utilize your talent, utilize your skills. I was selling masks to um, people, you know, that funeral homes. Wow. You know, people, you couldn't go into the funeral homes without masks. I was selling. So it was almost every day that I was uh, getting phone calls. You know, can you make masks, you know, for my family member? I had the pictures on them and mm. they did. And then I got a uh, magnet and I put it on my car that I sell masks. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. That increased my business uh, sales at least by 10%. Wow. Yeah, because people were calling, you got the NK95 or, you know. Yeah. And I had a big old mag, like, I sell masks and, you know. <laughs> it was, and, and, and believe it or not, that's where we got in connection yes, at yes. because we are um, WNB, uh, WNBE Women Certified and we came across an opportunity with the state and they wanted like some trillion amount of masks and we kind of put it out there, not mm -hmm. sure if anybody could even handle it because I think the volume was, 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 was ridiculous. 
yeah. they were asking. And we kind of put it out there. And she was like, me. We were like, <laughs> really? She was like, oh, yeah, I can do this. And we, you know, we went through the procedure. Mm-hmm. And we, we were able to submit the bid. Um, you gave us what we needed exactly on time, down to the, the, the inches and the, uh, the demographics <laughs> as far as, mm-hmm. no, the dimensions. Let me mm-hmm. correct myself. The um, dimensions. And that's how we actually met. Yes. And when I tell you, I think they were asking, um, they wanted a company inside of Ohio. Mm-hmm. They did not want to outsource outside of Ohio. Mm-hmm. They wanted someone inside of Ohio that could make it um, make it happen. And you were literally one of the only people mm-hmm. that could handle mm-hmm. that type of volume. Yeah, And that was so impressive because, like I said, it was, and you know what, we ran a, across all type of people. I mean, women that were in their garages, yeah. Like making masks, yeah. but you had this whole manufacturing company mm-hmm. that was ready to go. So I was like, wow, this is this uh, amazing. And oftentimes we don't know who we're in the midst of. Mm-hmm. We don't know who we uh, we're, we're connected with that we can just reach out and say, hey, can you help me on this? Can you assist me on this? Yeah. And um, you were talking about being the fashion designer, but at the end of the day, too. making the money is important. I often say, if you are not making money, it is called a hobby. (laughs) Yes. It's not a business. That's right. It's it's a hobby. Yes, it is. Um, And there Mm -hmm. is a difference between a business and a hustle. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because I I tell people all the time, I don't have a hustle. I have a business. There's a big difference. What would you say the the big difference between the business and the hustle? Just school us a little bit today. Well, I think a business, you can pass it on to your kids. Mm. A hustle is um, you may change your mind and don't <laughs> want to do it no more. So, yeah, business is a is 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 your empire. It's your brand. Yeah. It's what you create. And um, like I said, you can pass it on to your kids or your grandkids. Yeah, yeah. but a hustle, you can still have a job. And, you know, I know people has a nine to five and then hustle selling handbags or mm-hmm. you know something the like car, that yeah. yeah the trunk of your car <laughs> yeah you gotta respect mm-hmm. the hustle but there is yeah. definitely a difference in between that yeah. even with the business aspect there's a lot of funds and there's a lot of prep that goes even mm-hmm. before you mm-hmm. Uh, be are able to display anything people understand yeah. sometimes there's a lot of money that that you have mm-hmm. to put up in the very very beginning mm-hmm. and I think that is definitely connected to your faith because if you don't yes. have faith in what you're called to do Absolutely. you won't be able to I, I call it taking a jump a big leap you are 101 percent correct and that's what another um small business, they fail also because you got to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, no one else is going to believe in you. Mm-hmm. You got And you, right, you got to just, just go for it. I never look at failure as being failure. I look at it as the first opportunity in learning. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a learning experience. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a, a, a one of my mentors. She uses this term, and she says, "Scare money, don't make money." Absolutely, absolutely, that is the truth. Yeah, and I was like, uh, and, and I heard it, and I said to myself, "You know what? You are absolutely right." So there is a level of risk, but you know what? What I find out there is a level of risk in anything that you do. Yep. Yep. Anything that you do. So mm-hmm. let's talk about some upcoming events because first of all, I don't know how you sleep because you got so much <laughs> going on. So let's talk about mm-hmm. these upcoming events. And before we close out, you're going to okay. tell us where to meet you at, where we can find you at. Cause we support our own here Thank at you. Christian network entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the boutique is, um, it's at 24331 Chagrin Boulevard. That's inside the Chagrin Pavilion, right next to Giant Eagle and Verizon Bitlocks. And um, so, you know, we're open from noon to 6. No, wait a minute. Yeah, noon to 6 p.m. Um, at the end of this month, I think the 28th, I am going to be at Women networking event i'm actually going to be speaking that is at the holiday inn in independence okay so you definitely got to come out because it's just going to be great networking 
uh, for all just entrepreneur women. When is it again? Y'all got my calendar out so we can <laughs> take a look at it. Uh, you say at the end of August? The 28th. The 28th, that's a Saturday, everyone. Saturday, and it's at the Holiday Inn in Independence. Okay. And I think it's like from 10 to maybe 6 or 7 p.m. And is it? it's a women's mm-hmm. uh, business event? Yes, yes. Uh, entrepreneurs like myself is going to be speaking. I've started speaking at 3 p.m. And talking about the same thing, you know, how to grow your business, how to start a business. Um, so that's one of the things. Is um, there a cost for that to get in um, or how do we sign up? So... I'm not for sure, but if you reach out to me, like, um, you know, you can call me up. Is it okay if I get my number? It's up to you. Yeah. Yeah, It's your show for today. (laughs) (laughs) So if you call me up, my number is Mm -hmm. 216-410-8555. And uh, I can text you, you know, The the information. So that's one thing. And then September, the... Fifth, I'm actually going to be participating in Harlem Fashion Week, so I'll be in New York. Oh, um, Fashion Week. Yeah, Harlem okay. Fashion Week. And um, I did it before a couple of years ago, and I was working with Malcolm X Daughters, which were just, you know, phenomenal. We had even talked about manufacturing their collections. Wow. Yeah. And September the 11th, I know I got like a whole lot going on. <laughs> September the 11th, I'm actually going to be at the Hilton Garden on Beta Drive in Mayfield. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm actually receiving the Icon Award. I'm this year recipient for the Icon Award. So it's a um, a pageant. It's a pageant for uh, women and kids and actually males also. Okay. Mm-hmm. So last year, uh, the Fowler Sisters, they was the recipient. So they're going to give it to me this year. So wow. really excited. Um, now I also want to just share that next year, as we know, the NBA all-stars is coming to Cleveland Yes, and I am going to be hosting a fashion show February the 19th and Ricky Smiley is going to be my MC. Oh, wow. So you definitely have to, um, call me. We going to have vendors. Uh, we're going to have designers from all over the world and it is going to be phenomenal. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I just want to be a model. That's all. That's okay, so, <laughs> oh, yeah, glad you said that. Glad you, because September the 25th, we are having model calls at Garfield Heights Library from 2 to 4. 2 to 4? 2 to 4. Okay, don't act like you don't know me, Miss Diane, when I come up there. <laughs> so, I got to say this, because I will not be there, because, I mean, this is, what August, July, I had so many people. Um, wow. and the thing is, the designers they you know want to choose their models, yeah. So, and because I know so many Certain people, yeah, I'm like, I'm not gonna be there because I'm already getting you know stalked and harassed, and my heart is so good. I'll be like, oh, yeah, everybody model, like all the Cleveland's just up model, oh, just on, everybody just model, <laughs> and oh, then. Wow. March the 5th, I am um, participating in Paris Fashion Week of next year. So I'm super excited about that. Super excited. Wow. So you have a, do you have like, okay, a web page mm-hmm. that we can go to maybe with your itinerary yes. on it? Because we definitely really want to be a support. And like Thank you said, you. networking is just mm-hmm. so important. Like I said before, when I found out you were on the show, I'm like, ah. <laughs> so Thank what you. what's your website we can you know mm-hmm. look at what's going on with yeah. you so it's just styles of imaginations.com that easy yeah, guys. that easy that easy and you know feel free to you know call me and or send me a, a text and i'll text you you know different events different fashions and yeah. Wow. So uh, um, before we get like a, maybe about a little, about 10 minutes okay. left. Um, one thing that you mentioned before you mentioned the mm-hmm. followers, 
I really want to just talk about a little bit about how you still, although you're this business owner, you Mm -hmm. have your own boutique, but you still are in support of other women or other organizations here in Cleveland. I don't hear that attitude where Mm -hmm. um, it's just me and about me only and I don't share Mm -hmm. my information. I don't get that vibe from you. Mm -hmm. I don't hear that attitude. Mm -hmm. Your name is very, very Mm -hmm. uh, familiar throughout the boutique industry here in Cleveland. Um, it's almost as though you are one of the um, pioneers. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, with, with boutiques, because if I if I mention your name, I'm like, oh, I know Diane, I, I know Diane. So <laughs> tell me a little bit because we have a generation that is very me myself, yeah. and it's all about me mm-hmm. and my four at home and Mm-mm. that type of thing. But mm-hmm. one thing that we are able to see is that you've been able to share information, mm-hmm. and it hasn't. Um, cost you any well it hasn't stunted your growth because you're just steady growing after being in the game for all of this time so what's the importance of um supporting uh fellow uh, entrepreneurs even if they're in similar businesses can you like school this new school on it yeah you have to and and you're so right people are are so tight-lipped you have to and i say this literally you have to work together. Mm-hmm. You know, Renee and Tracy, the followers, they've been in business for over 30 years. And if I don't have something, I call them up. Hey girl, you got a green outfit for this customer. And they just such wonderful people. Like, mm-hmm. um, so you, you got to be able to, you know, share your knowledge. That's yeah. the only way you are really going to be blessed. Yes. Yeah, and I I see it all the time. I I can almost and I hate to say this, but I can almost tell those people that's going to go further. I mean, if I can help you, and sometimes, and I have to say this on a side note, I help too many people, and I get burned in the end. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. I'm always getting. You know, I tried to help a, a young lady about a month ago, and it, that's what Legal Shield. It, it became a legal issue for me trying to help someone, wow. but it didn't stop me. I'm going to continue to do what I can to help anyone. Mm-hmm. And um, if I can't, I try to find um, a way to help you. So, yeah. yeah, you 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 got to be able to network and you got to um, just, if it's something that I know, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, that's very, very important. And I, 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 be honest with you, I find a lot of people, women here, that don't do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've, I've heard conversations, and I've heard uh, mm-hmm. individuals that's trying to get into a certain sector. What I do believe is, I believe there is enough oh, of coins out here yes, yes. for everyone. And we're not saying to spill your whole guts. We're not saying, yeah. you, you know. Yeah. But to just be a support to another um, oh, um, yeah. another business. Like you said, if you don't have something, you literally call followers like, hey, do you have this? That is admirable. You don't yes. hear that normally. Yeah. It's almost like just wait here for three weeks until I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. And you so right. And that's just something that you just, you know, you don't want to do. You, um, I give another example of Lady Lagana Smooches. Yes. That's yeah. my girl. Yes. And so she's got this, you know, big fashion show. Mm-hmm. I advertised in her um uh, her magazine. Yeah. I advertised in her magazine too to support. <laughs> yeah, to yes. support, absolutely. And that's where you get your blessings from. That's where you get your blessings from. Just we the we get it, you know. Yeah. You know, as yeah. sisters, I call them both my sisters in Christ. And she's the same way. Hey, did you call uh Smooches and see, you know, if they well, let me give them a call and see if you got right. like an outfit for this customer. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it, it's it's crazy because I've seen how that kind of works and how it works. And like I said, at the end of the day, uh, we see results. And what yeah. is results? Results are is the fact that you've been able to sustain and you've yes. been able to grow. And there is a difference between, I, I say, just existing and actually making it. Um, existing and actually yes. thriving in something. Yes. Um, I don't want to just exist. I want to thrive in it. I want to be yes. successful. Successful 
in it, whatever your means of success is or however you measure the success. Yes, you are 101% correct. You are absolutely, it's, and you can go as far as you want to go. Mm-hmm. Far as you want to go, I, we're gonna we're gonna start closing out with that. But we're gonna close out with that as far as you want to go. Um, I often tell I have four daughters at home. You are the only person that can stop you. So, and I love the confidence. I call it um I call it godly confidence. Yes. That confidence for knowing who my God is, yep. who I'm called to be, yep. and that I can do what it is that I'm set out to do so yeah. we want to thank you so much miss diane for coming yeah. on the show i enjoyed this time immensely like i said i often <laughs> sit as the student because i'm like jotting down okay this is what i can do i can take this advice and implement and that is what we hope from christian networks entrepreneurs we're hoping that we bring these guests on and that the information and the wealth of knowledge because they have truly earned the right to sit in this seat and earn the right to educate us and that you'll take the information that has been given the information that has been freely given not to mention to you and be able to implement it in your own business be sure to go to stylesofsuccess.com a styles of imagination styles of imagination <laughs> i'm sorry styles of imagination.com and check out miss diane so we will see you on next month and remember if you don't network you don't work see you soon